Hi girlies! Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to make a quick video about how I protect all my leather luxury bags because quite a while ago a subscriber did ask me to share all the products and tips that I use to keep my bags looking as beautiful as they do and I think it's really important to have this kind of knowledge so that when something does accidentally happen to your bag you're prepared or just in general you want to prep your bag such that bad things don't happen to it in the first place. So I'm going to share my top five tips on how I care for and protect my luxury leather bags and also share all the products I use in the process. So we're gonna get right into it, but before we do, hi, I'm Somi Shop. I make videos once or twice a week on luxury and fashion. If you like all things luxury, unboxing, or mess, whatever, this is the channel for you, and I would love it if you subscribe so you don't miss anything. Okay, we're gonna get right into the first tip, which is you should always spray your bags down with a protectant, water-resistant spray. Now, the spray that I use, and I think a lot of people generally use, is this Carbon Pro from Colonel here. And I think that this has just worked wonders on my bag. Of course, this is the kind of thing where you don't always notice, like, is it working on my bag? But I actually have noticed for a fact that it has protected my bags in several situations. So I'm going to include a clip on exactly how I spray my bags down with this spray. It's super easy, but the number one thing that you want to do first is that you want to spot check the bag with this spray on the interior of the bag where it's not super visible. This is in case that, for example, the leather does have like an adverse reaction to the chemicals in the spray. I have never once had that happen to me, and I I've sprayed pretty much every single bag down that I own with this but you know for peace of mind it's always great to just spray the inside and just double check that nothing else is going to happen to the color of the bag so essentially what I would do is I will just get a small little cloth and spray that cloth with this or you can spray just a little bit of this on the interior of the bag and then you kind of just want to let it sit and then kind of rub it out and just make sure that nothing is going to change about the bag leather composition or the leather color and then once you've spot checked the inside of the bag then you go on to actually spraying the entirety of your bag so what I usually do is I'll just lay it down on the floor I usually put either like paper towels or a towel down under the bag so you can protect it and essentially what you do is you're just going to spray a thin film all around the exterior of the bag so you want to make sure you're hitting every crevice you can also spray down the strap any exposed parts of leather of the strap this doesn't really have any effect on hardware in my opinion so you just spray everything down you want to do a light coat you don't want to you know drench your bag or anything and you essentially just let it dry you don't really want to rub it away or anything you're just gonna let your bag sit and breathe for around 30 minutes I would say and then come back to it and just check that everything has dried and then you're pretty much good to go and that's it I mean it's such a simple step and it's something that really will protect your bag so what I find that this does best is just it creates like a really thin barrier against things like water against dust against other kind of abrasive materials that's going to protect your bag so for example I have a white Chanel flap I'll include a picture here and this is kind of going to be like the bag that I use for a lot of examples in this video but I have dropped this white lambskin on the ground I have worn it against different clothing colors like black and everything and generally if anything does happen to get on the bag for example if it's dust if it's just some kind of like color or I, I've eaten something generally I can just wipe it away because this is creating some kind of little protective film against the outside of your bag so even if something gets on it you can just take like a clean paper towel or clean tissue and just wipe it away. This is just that first step defense against things literally penetrating into your leather, whether that be water, that be color, anything else. This is going to be that first step defense and it is I really think a necessary part of any luxury handbag collection because you're spending a lot of money on these bags you want to also spend a little bit of care into protecting them so they are long lasting as well we're gonna keep talking a little bit more about the exterior protection of your bag in just a little bit but I do want to bring up a really important point and that is also to protect the interior of your bag as well I think a lot of people kind of skip over this step because it's something that we don't really see or other people don't see on a regular basis but protecting the interior of your bag and more importantly protecting the shape of your bag is really important for the longevity and care for your bag. I wanted to share some products that I have recently really been loving and they are these base shapers by the company M Boutique. So they have been so kind to help part sponsor this video. This brand has been around since 2019 and they are completely Australian owned and every single shaper is handmade and also made to order so you know you're getting really great quality as well as it's going to be a perfect fit for any bag. Pretty much every single bag you see here actually does have one of their shapers in them and they are so so lovely but you might be asking yourself in general like why should I even be using a base shaper in the first place and that is because leathers are so lovely so buttery so delicate to the touch but that also means that they're really pliable. They're prone to sagging, they're prone to stretching if you're leaving them in a certain position for a certain amount of time and so if you want to keep your bags looking like the day you bought them 
them, it's really important to maintain the structure and the integrity of the bag. So I'm going to open a, a couple of these to show you exactly how I'm putting them in my bag. So I did want to show you the ones that I'm already using right now. So for example, this one is my Goyard tote. And I think that for me personally, I do like it when my totes have a more structured shape. I'm sure that some people do like the really slouchy look of a lot of totes, but I do like having some support because totes are meant to carry, you know, several heavy things like a laptop or water bottles. And I do feel like if you continually put heavy things into this, which is even canvas, it's going to stretch the canvas. It's going to stretch the leather and eventually going to end up with a really frumpy bag. So right now I do have this shaper inside. So I'm just going to show you right now it's completely empty. And if I were to put in, for example, you know, these heavy water bottles inside my bag, immediately I'm getting this weird frumpy shape on the bottom. And these are heavy water bottles. So I can actually feel like these sharp edges along the bottom of the bag. And I know that if I keep wearing my tote like this, this is eventually going to stretch the canvas. And I would really hate for that to happen because I really love the structured look of a Goyard tote. So I'm going to pop in my shaper now, but this is made out of faux leather and it has a really, really soft and delicate feel to it. It's got kind of a little bit of a grain similar to, you know, kind of what Togo leather looks like for Hermes, but it has structure so you can put weight onto it, but it is also still pliable because it's really important that even though it's providing that structure on the bottom of the bag, it's still soft enough so that it's not creating any hard edges or anything that can damage the interior of your bag. So what I love is that it also has really soft corners like this. You can bend them up and down so you know that that there's not going to be any kind of pressure on any corners or any sides of the interior of your bag. And I have heard some complaints for several base shapers that I've already been looking to for my own personal use that there have been those issues where it's like, it's creating that structure, but it's almost too much structure. And it's actually pushing outward from the inside of the bag. And it's actually leaving these kind of weird lumps and bumps from the outside of your bag. So it's really important to find something that has structure, but it's also really, really flexible and durable. So I'm just gonna pop this in my Goyard tote now. So I have popped it in the side of my bag and you can see that the color is absolutely lovely and matches with the rest of the canvas. And something really important to note too is that, for example, for the Goyard toe or any other bag that does kind of have like internal piping here, these space shapers are made to perfectly fit right underneath that stitching. So it actually, you know, I can turn my bag upside down and because it's slitted right underneath that piping, it's not going to fall out. It's not going to slide under. And base shapers are just meant to be put in once and just literally forgotten about. You never have to think about it again. It's always just gonna sit there and protect your bag. So now with my shaper here, let's do the water bottle test really quickly. And I've got two really, really heavy water bottles on this side and you can see there's absolutely no fold, no give, no nothing. And now I feel super comfortable being able to put my laptop, put water bottles in, put doggy related things into my bag and my bag is not going to give in any way. And I think that these are just really, really high quality. I also want to give you a couple more examples of how I've been using my shapers. So I've actually popped one shaper into my Prada Nylon Re-Edition bag. And you might be thinking, this is such a tiny bag. Like, why would I ever need a shaper for it? But there's a couple of different reasons. So even though this is made of nylon, this bag is actually really prone to deforming. So I'm going to pop some pictures up on the screen of people trying to resell their Prada Nylon bag. And you can just see how much the structure of the bag has deteriorated over time. And that's because, you know, this is a casual bag. If you don't really care, it doesn't really matter. But I personally want to have this bag looking exactly like it does now for many years to come. And so I have popped in one of the M Boutique shapers in here as well, and I've actually picked a white one. So I do normally like to match the color of my shaper in my bag, but you can just see by using a white shaper how much it kind of lightens the interior of the bag. If I had taken this out and it's like kind of low light settings, it is almost impossible to find my keys, find my little lipstick in this kind of one big pouch of a bag. So adding a shaper that does have a kind of lighter color to it does really lighten the interior of the bag and it does help you find and kind of search for things easier when you're opening up your bag. So that's another really great reason why you might want to use a shaper. And again, you can see that there's absolutely no pushing of anything on any sort of interior to outside pressure. And this is just sitting in my bag. It's going to stay in my bag forever. And that's it, right? I never have to think about it again. I also have them in my Chanel bags as well. So for example, in my 
wallet on chain i just have popped in my shaper here and particularly for the wallet on chain i actually did have another shaper but it was one without the wings kind of that flank the sides of the bag and i actually do prefer the wings better because it does just provide a little bit more support on the sides and especially for a wallet on chain which is a small bag you want to maximize the amount of space that you're able to put items inside so actually having the little wing kind of allowing the bag to expand naturally is really nice and it allows me to fit a couple more extra items in there for sure again i would highly recommend that you do consider getting shapers for your bags another great thing is that shapers can also be used with inserts so you might think that like the two are interchangeable but actually I use both at the same time so for example I do have this felt insert for my Goyard tote but I do feel like felt is very pliable and it's kind of not as structured as the faux leather inserts that a boutique makes so I do still pop in my shaper at the bottom of the bag and then I add my insert on top of it because the shaper is so thin it doesn't really take up any space so that you can use them both simultaneously and get the best of both worlds Another thing that I want to know is I do feel like a lot of shaper or insert brands currently in the market focus heavily on like Hermes or Chanel or like the more popular brands and they do not really consider the lesser popular bags or brands as options for making their shapers. Something that's really great about a boutique is that they have so many different options for so many different brands. I think they have like over 130 available options on their website currently and the great thing is that if you do not find the right shaper for your bag, you can simply request a customization order and they will custom make that exact amount shaper for your needs and they're not upcharging or anything they will simply like I think they charge you the price for the closest shaper that's listed on their website and shipping is also really accessible and fast I think I got my shapers in about a week and you get free shipping over about 35 US dollars and each shaper is only like 20 ish dollars I want to say so if you're going to buy like a five thousand dollar bag or upwards of five thousand dollars buying a twenty dollar shaper should be really nothing to protect the longevity and the beauty of your bag for all the years to come that you use it so the next thing I want to talk about is what to do in a situation that you come across when an accident does happen to your bag so the third tip I want to mention is to always have the necessary products that you need to take care of your bag in an emergency situation or just when damage comes to your bag so I want to talk about a specific situation that I came across that made me really passionate about always having these products on hand because my white lambskin Chanel actually did come across a really really terrible thing and it is that I was eating one day I think it was at like a dumpling restaurant and I don't even exactly know what happened but after I got up and I was walking down the street my friend pointed out that I had this yellow stain on my lambskin it was like this highlighter yellow stain on my back I have absolutely no idea where it came from because I was not eating anything yellow at the time but regardless of where it came from I was in a panic I did not want my bag to be stained forever and so I did the worst thing that you could possibly do which is actually try to use water to clean your bag do not use water to clean your bag your water will actually damage the leather even further and it's not going to do anything to help Help remove the stain of course if you get like something really kind of small on it like it like smidge of dirt or something and you've used your leather protectant spray you can use just kind of like a wet wipe to wipe away that dirt thing because you have that protectant spray on it but you should never like try to like penetrate your bag kind of scrub your bag with water because that is ultimately going to be really bad for your bag so I actually got the entire stain out and I want to share the products I use to get it done. I actually have this kind of like setup of leather products that I always have on hand and I've used them so many times to just do minor repairs on any of my bags and I'm going to share my favorites and how to use them in different types of situations. So the first one I want to share with you is actually from the same brand as that leather protectant spray and it is from Colonel and this is a leather cream. And then my next go-to product would actually be from Cadillac, and this is a leather cleaner. And then I also bought these two in kind of like a flurry when I did get that stain on my bag because I just wanted to try every single product in general. This one came as a set, so if you did not want to buy the other two, which are a little bit more pricey, I do feel like these also do a pretty good job. This comes with a leather cleaner as well, and then this one is also a leather conditioner and I'm going to link all the products down below so don't worry but I'm going to mainly focus on these two because I do tend to use the Cadillac and the Colonel a little bit more frequently so this leather cleaner is really great for when you have color transfer specifically and the way that I typically use this is I will just kind of dab a little bit of microfiber cleaning cloth or I can even use a q-tip and you just kind of dab it and wet it with this solution and you just gently rub away at the color transfer area and to tell whether or not the product is actually working to remove the color transfer is that that white cloth or that white q-tip should eventually start to pick up that collar that is trying to remove and I feel like it's worked in a lot of situations for me I've used it on my white lambskin I've also used 
used it on this pink Chanel bag one time when something like something blue slightly got on it and I used this and a q-tip to just wipe it away and it worked really great but sometimes this for some reason is not working and that's actually what was happening with my white lambskin that yellow white highlighter stain I have no idea what it was but it definitely penetrated to the interior of the leather and so when that happens this is kind of more like a, of a surface cleaning but when it penetrates into the leather I would definitely recommend a leather conditioner like this. It's a pretty thick cream, as you can see here. And what you wanna do is you wanna put a generous portion of the cream on the part of your bag that has had that color transfer or whatever stain on your bag. And you wanna just like kind of gently massage it into the leather with a microfiber cleaning cloth. And then you just wanna let it sit. You want the chance for the leather to absorb the leather conditioner. And kind of what I've heard is actually leather conditioner will try and actually like pull out that color from the interior of the leather. And then once it's kind of dry, you want to go in and again buff out that leather with that leather conditioner and that is what worked a miracle on my white lambskin bag i'm going to insert videos footage here of exactly how beautiful it looks there's actually no stain on it there's nothing on that bag i have no idea but that colonel leather conditioner worked wonders on my bag and i would highly highly recommend just having both the leather conditioner and the leather cleaner on hand at all times just in case because you don't want to be put in a situation where you're trying to amazon prime these products and then that just allows that stain to kind of penetrate deeper into your bag and you never want that to happen in the worst case situations, you can reach out to leather surgeons. They do an amazing job on restoring bags that have so much damage to them, any kind of damage. They do wonders. They provide you a quote if you just reach out to them for free. So in the most extreme situations, you should seek professional help to restore the condition of your lovely bags. I also wanted to mention the products that I use to keep my hardware looking beautiful. So this is maybe not talked about as often, but I just have two products I always have on hand to make sure that my hardware is looking wonderful because hardware can definitely tarnish over time. So you do want to be able to catch that quickly and kind of remove it so it doesn't get any worse and permanently damage any hardware on your bag. So I actually have two products that I mainly use. One of them is a very simple kind of jewelry cleaning cloth. So I actually use this on a lot of my jewelry as well, sterling silver or gold. It just polishes the jewelry really beautifully and I feel like it takes off tarnish really well because it's meant for like sterling silver jewelry and so on my Birkin or even my Chanel flap turn lock, I've used this to just like wipe it down and keep it clean and also kind of a little bit I feel like softens any scratches or anything that's on the hardware and then also additionally i actually have a rubber eraser this is actually an eraser that i used like way back in high school too i still have it in my pencil case and this actually does a really great job of removing tarnish as well so for example on my birkin or even a lot of hermes plating it has these little screws on the edges of this plate here and the screws in particular are really prone to tarnish and anytime I see tarnish there I just take this little rubber eraser and kind of just rub it a couple times and it always comes off really cleanly so everybody has this so even if you didn't have this uh, microfiber cleaning cloth because that is something that you'll have to kind of purchase I think a lot of people do just have a rubber eraser at home so in any emergency just seek out one of these rub down your tarnished hardware with this and you should be good to go. The fourth tip that I want to talk about is properly storing your bag. So of course, we love displaying our bags. Our bags should be allowed to breathe and having them on display is so beautiful, but there are just some things to remember when you're displaying your bags or when you're storing your bags. I actually don't display any of my bags. I do like to just keep them stuffed in their dust bag because I want to just make sure that they are 100% protected. So I think the number one thing that I would recommend is stuffing your bag. So whether that be stuffing with tissue paper like this or stuffing with bubbles I always have every single one of my bags stuffed such that the leather doesn't sag or the leather doesn't kind of wear in a way or the bag doesn't sit lopsidedly it's really important to stuff your bags and keep their shape just like the base shaper does such that the structural integrity of the bag never decreases the second thing that I think is most important is the conditions in which you're displaying or storing your bags so even if you do want to display them on shelves or whatever you do want to keep them out of direct sunlight and you do want to make sure that the moisture is not too low or too high in whatever room they're being displayed at this is because sun can cause patina on some leathers and also cause damage to canvas so it's really great if you keep your bag kind of shaded from the sun additionally if the moisture is too high the bags will kind of absorb that moisture and it can damage the leather and then alternatively if it's too dry then the leather can dry out and become cracked 
I think most people's rooms and living spaces are pretty normal. You don't have to usually worry about like the humidity of your room, but this is just to make sure that you're not like putting your humidifier right next to where you're displaying your bags. The way that I personally store my bags is stuffed and in its dust bag and kind of just in the position that the store that I bought it from recommends. So for example, my Birkin, it's recommended that it's stuffed, it's in its dust bag and that it's also laying on its back. But for my Chanel Mini, it's recommended that it's stuffed, it's in its dust bag, but it's actually laying on the flattest part of the leather, which is actually the bottom. So I kind of store my bags in all the different ways, but the number one thing is that they're always in their dust bag, they're always away from light and kept in a cool place, and that's just how I like to store them. Because I have a small collection, all my bags are regularly rotated, so all my bags have a chance to breathe and the leather to get exposed to the air. If you have a really large collection, it is important to once in a while pull out that bag from that dust bag, set it out, admire it, and then put it back if you're not going to use it. And the last and final tip is to just be smart when wearing your bag. So that just means if I have a white lambskin or a light leather bag, I'm not going to be wearing it against abrasive clothing. I'm not going to be wearing it with really dark clothing that hasn't been proofed that it's okay to wear it with. Something that my Hermes essay always says to me, and one prime example of this is when I was discussing wishlist bags with him, I was considering the colors like Cray, Nata, anything white, but I was also very concerned because I was like, you know, isn't Cray or Nata going to be really prone to color transfer? isn't going to be more prone to damage and all my essay said was that if you treat it like an $11,000 bag you're going to be totally fine because I think sometimes a lot of us make the mistake of thinking we're buying this really expensive bag so it's going to be extremely durable it's going to be protected against everything because we invested so much money into it but that's simply not true they're expensive bags for a reason and that's because the leather is beautiful the leather is delicate but it's also really prone to damage so as long as we treat our bags like they are the money that they are worth we are going to be totally fine and because they're so expensive spending a a little extra on these products to take care of them and to maintain shape and all those good things is really nothing in the long run. Well that brings us to a wrap on my top five tips on how to care for and protect your luxury leather bags. I hope that you were able to take away at least one thing from this video. All these products are things that I personally use and I personally stand by and love so I hope that you'll consider getting them too to protect anything leather and luxury in your collection. I will also have links to everything down below and especially for the base shapers as long as you sign up on their M Boutique website you can get 10% off your entire purchase so I highly recommend that you check them out. But as always, thank you guys again so much for watching. I will definitely see you in the next one. Bye!